will not hear any um, disturbances, like the noises in your backgrounds, okay? So always mute your microphones whenever the teacher is also discussing so that you will hear everything here. I will hear everything and you'll also uh, gonna learn something from today since this is your MAC exam already, like your preparation or practice exam for your contest proper. All right? So let's give like two minutes for the others because I think there are still some who haven't entered our class you can drink water or you can relax for a bit before we start or you can prepare your notes and notebooks if you want to take note so you can do that your coach will be back after two minutes Okay, so hello once again, everyone. I can still see like the numbers are increasing. So I know that probably probably there are a lot who haven't entered yet, but let's just start, okay? Since we have like 30 plus already here. So as what I've said, this is your mock exam. So the questions here are going to be the same with your, with the large class um, training wherein you're going to answer 30 questions as well. And it will be divided into subtopics or subcategories, which are logical thinking, geometry, arithmetic, and so on. You also have combinatorics there. So we're going to try to answer those questions. And I hope that all of you who are here were able to answer the mock test also, right? So that you can have a an idea on what are the topics or what are the questions that we're going to answer today. So without so much ado, let's try to start answering those questions. So this is actually the first one, which belongs to your logical thinking part. Okay, according to the pattern shown below, what should be the number filled in the blank? So this is your pattern and numbers here. You have nine. One, seven, three, five, five, three. So you have the blank here. What do you think is the answer here? If you have answer, feel free to chat it on our chat box. You can type there. Seven, okay. Go ahead. Seven, all right. Thank you so much for those. Um non-Filipino students here are also participating in the chat box. Feel free, okay? You can put your answers there. Yeah, it's seven. Why do you think it's going to be seven? What's the pattern there? Who can answer? What is the pattern? One. Yes, Anne. Go ahead. One, three, five, seven. Mm -hmm. The pattern is actually, there are two patterns that exist here. That is possible, right? 
there are times that the pattern is just you have to add a certain number. For example, can I give you an example? Let's say three, five, seven. If this is your series of numbers and you are asked, what is the pattern here? You have to look first at the first two consecutive numbers, two succeeding numbers. And then try to look for their difference. It's actually two. And it's also the same with the seven and five, which is two. So that's it's like a pattern. And it's common for all of the uh, numbers or the consecutive numbers. But it's also possible that our pattern lies um, alternately. For example, like this. If we're going to look at the consecutive numbers here, it's not that easy to find a pattern, right? Because if we're going to get the difference between 9 and 1, that's going to be 8. If we're going to find the difference between 1 and 7, it's not even a pattern anymore because 1 is a smaller number compared to 7. So it's not like this, the 9 and 1, right? So if you're going to look at it right that imagine if you don't have an, any idea how to answer this so that's how you try to uh, find the logic between this pattern so now this is also possible that what if the pattern is not in the consecutive numbers but in the numbers that are after one another so for example this this and this right if you try to look for that since they are numbers after one another like you have to skip one number before that number it's actually possible to find a pattern because if you're going to get the difference between nine and seven that is two the same with seven and five that is also this is also two right and the same with five and three if you're going to subtract that that is also minus two so that is a pattern now because this is uniform this is the same for everything and another thing is this is one, three, five. Okay, the other set of numbers that are alternating. If you try to look at that also, they have a certain pattern. So what is their pattern? It's actually the opposite with the first one that we got. The first one is we are subtracting, right? The second pattern is we have to add two here. So it's different. Here you have to minus two. Here you have to plus. 2. So 1 plus 2, that's why you got the 3. And then 3 plus 2, you have the 5. Okay, so since we stop here, meaning the pattern that we're going to follow is this one at the top, right? The plus 2. Because it's, it should not be this because we are here now. So the next number, number here would be definitely after this, not this one. Okay, so therefore... The, the pattern that we're going to use or we're going to follow is the first one, the plus two. So the other group of numbers, the one, three, five. So since we stop here at five and our pattern is to add two, so therefore five plus two, that is seven. Okay, you have to look at this kind of patterns as well. Okay, it might occur in your exam. So it's not necessarily that the pattern is always going to be one. There could also be two patterns that exist in your problem. Okay, let's proceed. Very good. Your answers are correct. It's seven. How about question number two? Sarah is the youngest girl in the family and has two brothers and sisters. How many children is or are there in Sarah's family? What is your answer to this? Six. Okay. How many children is or are there in Sarah's family, right? So it says there that Sarah is the youngest girl in the family and has two brothers and um, three sisters. So basically, we're going to count all the children in their family. So you have two for the brother, right? And then three for the sister. And then... Of course, we should not forget about Sarah since she's the youngest. So meaning she's among, I mean, you can add plus one here to the sisters, right? She's a girl and then she's among the, four, the sisters there in their family of like all the children. So two 
brothers plus her three sisters plus her itself, her herself, rather, it's going to be six children. Okay. But if the question was like, how many are they in the family? So you have to also take note that you have to include the mother and the father, for example. Like you will add two. But since here you only ask for the children, so count like the, all the siblings that Sarah has. And then of course you have to include her because she is part of those children. So two plus three plus one, that is six. Okay, very good. How about question number three? In the figure below, it shows two balances. Which among the circle, the triangle, and the square is the heaviest? So we're going to compare two balance here. The first one, it says you need to have four circles to balance two square. Among these two or between these two, which one is heavier? Which one is greater than? The greater than is among these two. What do you think? It is going to be the... Which one is heavier? This one or this one? Okay, it is the square. square. Very good. Okay, it's square. the square. Why? Square. Okay, this is greater than, okay? Why is the square is the heavier? Because you have to remember that if you are balancing different shapes right there, always remember this, everyone. The more the number of that certain figure, the less its mass or weight. Okay? For example, how many, if in terms of numbers, you have four circles, right? And then for the square, you only have two. So it means that if... This is about like one versus one, like one circle and one square. Square is definitely square. heavier. Yes, it's heavier compared to the circle because you need a lot of circle to balance only two square. Does that make sense? So always remember that the more the number of that certain figure, the less it's a mass or weight if it's just one of that. Okay, for example, this. So, because you need a lot of circle to balance only two square, it means this one is heavier compared to the other one. Now, let's go to the second balance. You have triangle and then you also have your square. I mean, circle rather. So, let's compare which one is heavier compared to this. Again, you can apply the same logic. Yeah. The more the number yeah. of the certain figure, yeah. the... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So please mute your microphones, everyone. Okay. I appreciate if you're going to mute it first. Okay. So again, the same thing. Since we have a lot more circles than the triangle, so meaning the triangle is heavier. So if you're going to rank them, which one is the heaviest? Remember? The circle Wait. is already less than the triangle. And there's another uh, figure that are less than the circle. So if you're going to rank them from uh, lighter to the heaviest, your lighter is actually the square, right? Because it's less than the circle. The next one is going to be your circle. And then finally is your triangle so the answer here is going to be triangle because again the circle is already less than the triangle but there is also another figure that is much less than the circle so if we're going to rank them from the list to the heaviest here definitely this one is the heaviest the triangle Okay, so your answer should be triangle. All right. So let's have question number four. How about this? Daniel has four footballs. Daniel also has four less footballs than Harry. How many footballs does Harry have? 
Eight. Eight. Okay, why? Four plus four equals eight. Very good. Okay, eight. that is correct. Eight. Yes, eight. Again, eight. it says there that Daniel has four footballs. Okay, so you can take note of that. Daniel has four. Just put here Dan. Eight. And then you have four. And then it says here that Daniel has four less footballs than Harry. So how are we going to get the value for Harry's football? So Harry is equal to what? Minus minus four right here. For four. yeah, for or for that. This is actually done here. Minus four. Done minus four or not minus. It's going to be addition because Dan is the less Daniel is the one that has lesser. So meaning we're gonna add for Harry. So it's just four plus Dan. Because again, Daniel has less than, less compared to Harry. So Harry should be added more compared to Daniel. So if it's four less, if we're going to get for Harry, the number of footballs for Harry, it should be plus four because that's their difference. Okay, so again, we already know that Daniel has four. So just replace this D or Dan's number of footballs with four. Again, and then if you're going to add that, that is also equal to 8. So that's how you got your 8. That's why Harry has 8 footballs. Because the difference between their number of footballs is 4, as what is said here in the question. Very good. Okay, how about question number 5? For question number 5, according to the pattern shown below, how many of this certain figure right here? Is or are there in the 15th group? Okay, what would be your answer? What do you think is the answer there? 16. 16. Okay, why 16? Because? 15. You can answer this question. How did you got the pattern? The first thing that you have to look for is actually the pattern. 15 plus 1 is 16. 15 plus? 1 equals 16. 1 equals 16. 1 plus 15 equals 16. Mm, how did we got that? How? Why did you use 15 plus 1? It's because... Very good. There that is one, correct. Yes. There was one at the corner. Hmm. Or simply the pattern is you have to add plus one for the number of group. Didn't you notice that? This is the third group. This is the fourth group. Except for the one, okay? On the second group, notice how many of this figure are there. There are three. And this is in the second group only, right? On the third group, how many of this figure do you have? You, ha you have four. Four. Okay, and then on the fourth group, you have five. So just by five. having that, yes, just by having that, it means that whatever group is that group that you have to look for, just have to add it with one. Like this, because you are in the second group, you added one, that's why it has three. On the third group, it has, since you are in the third group, you will add one, and then that's why it became four, meaning it increases with one. So the number of the group plus one is the pattern there. So therefore, like whenever you ask, how about the 30, 34th group? So you're just going to add that with one, okay? Because you know that for that group, it's the value of the group plus one. So 34 plus one equals 35. So, example, so that is how you got your 15 plus one. Since you were asked for the 15th group, yes, you will have 15. Please keep quiet. And then you will have plus one, which is 16. Okay. I'm not going to let you mute your microphones if you continue to uh, cause noises or you're going to interrupt the class okay i hope you understand that let's just pack each other here all right yes teacher i understand teacher 
Thank you so much. Okay, how about question number six? According to the pattern shown below, what is the English alphabet in the space provided? So your pattern is, I mean, your series of letters are B, D, F, H, and J. So this one, this is another kind of pattern wherein it involves letters. L. This time. Okay, L. it's not. L. Yeah, L. it's not numbers. L. How do we got the L? Why? Because B plus two equals D. B plus two equals D. Or it means that we have to skip two letters to get yeah. to the next letter D. in the pattern. Very good. Okay, that is correct. Because if you check this, you skip C. Uh, not two letters, okay? One letter only. Uh, when in terms of skipping. Because the C is already the next letter in the pattern. Okay, you just skip one letter B, C, D. And then how about for the next consecutive letter here? Uh, you have only one letter as well, right? You have uh, D, E. You skip the E. And then you got there the F. So basically, it means you just have to skip one letter. And then after that one letter, the next letter would be the letter here in our series. So since we are here in the J, meaning we have to skip one letter. So what's the next letter after J? K. K. Okay. K. Very, very good. K. K. And then K. after K, the letter is? K. L. 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 Okay, so that is how you got the letter L. You have to skip one letter and then proceed to the next letter. And that certain letter is going to be here in your series. So that is the pattern. The pattern is you have to skip one. But you, the pattern that you said is also correct. Meaning like you add two letters and then that last letter is going to be here. For example, B. So B, C, D. So D is the last letter, so that's going to be the next letter here. It's possible and it is correct. How about question number seven? This is on the arithmetic topic, so expect that you're going to add, subtract, and so on. So what is the one-digit number A if the seven. equation below is correct? You have seven. Seven. Nine. Seven. Nine. Seven. Nine. Seven. 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 Okay, you have Seven. different answers. Okay, you don't have to shout. You can just state your answer, okay? What did I said earlier? You have to, you don't have to shout, okay? Just say your answer. Teacher can hear that. Okay, for this one, you have a missing term in your equation on the left side of the equal sign. Okay, what we do here actually, instead of you are doing a trial and error, you can do this method. The okay? one digit method, number A. Yes, the A. method is A. we're going to rearrange the numbers. We'll start A. from the A. answer first A. and then followed by the other number on the left side. Okay, this side, after the equal sign, this side. So you have 16 there, right? So we'll copy that. And then we are going to change the sign or the operation for the numbers after the answer. So the answer, just leave it as it is, like 9. But this 16, notice here that the 16 is a positive number, right? Because it doesn't have any sign here, meaning it's automatically a positive number. So here in our method, we're going to change it into its opposite sign. We're going to give it its opposite sign. So what's the opposite of positive? It's a negative, right? Or, yes, minus. Opposite of plus is minus. So that's why it will become a minus. Now, we're going to answer this uh, expression that we got. So you have 9 and 16. 9 minus 16 or 16 minus 9 is how much? Negative seven. 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 9 is smaller. See here that our answer for A should be a negative. Negative so 7. Yes, negative 7 or just 7, okay? Since you were asked just for the value of A. Yeah. So that is where you're going to put the 7. So in this way, you don't need to do a trial and error. You're just going to do this method, okay? Just 
uh, rearrange them starting from the answer. Copy the other numbers on the other side, but change their signs uh, into its opposite. So if it's if it happens here that this was negative, we're gonna make this into a plus sixteen. Okay, but except for the first number, do not touch it. Just leave leave it like that. And then after after you solve for it, the answer that you're going to get is gonna be the value for the missing term here in the question, like this one. So that's why we put seven there because we got seven. You don't need to put negative seven because the negative is already here or the minus. Okay. So that's how you got the answer. It's not 9. It is 7. Let's check if that is correct. So how about if we put 7 here? Is 16 minus 7 is equal to 9? It yes. is, right? Very good. It's correct. This is going yes. to be... So we'll borrow 1 here. So this will become 0. And this will become 16. Oh, just like that. You can actually directly do that. Yes. 16 minus 7. That is 9. Because 9, nine plus 7 is nine. also 16. Very good. Okay. That's correct. It's not 9. It's 7, everyone. Because we are talking about the value for the A. Not for the uh, entire answer. Okay. How about question number? That is question number eight. Okay. Find the value of 17 minus 4. What is this one? Eight. Yes, it's eight. eight. Let's see if that is correct. Okay. So in this one, you have two kinds of numbers. There are positive numbers. There are negative numbers as well. So we're going to combine or add those numbers that have similar signs. So for example, your negative four and negative five. We're going to combine this first. Very good. We're going to combine this first. When you say combine, it means you're going to add. Right? So we're going to combine them first since they are similar. And then just leave the 17 alone since it doesn't have any other pair. So 4 plus 5, that is 9. 9. 9. Very nine. good. So meaning this is equal to negative nine. 9. Now, since this is a negative and your 17 is a positive number, that is why we are going to subtract them because they are not the same numbers. They are uh, opposite side, positive and negative. That's why we're going to minus. And it's very evident here because it's basically, if you're going to rewrite this one, this will become 17. So this, we're going to replace this with minus 9. So it's 17 minus 9. So 17 minus 9 is, again, we'll do the same, top, uh, the same procedure. 17 minus 9 is equal to 8 because 8 plus 9 is also 17. Very good. Okay, how about question number 9? Find the value of 3 plus 7 plus 6 plus 4. 20. 20. 20. 20. Okay, 20. Very good. 20. Yes. 20. 20. Very good, everyone. That is correct. 20, 20 because. This one, of course, there's a lot of ways for you to answer this. You can add them one by one, like 3 plus 7, 7 plus 6, 7 plus 4. Yes, but you can also try to pair the numbers that would end, that has a sum that ends with 0. For example, if you're going to pair 6 and 4, please keep quiet, everyone. Okay, if you're going to pair 6 and 4, this two number would have a sum of 10, right? And then if you're going to pair the 7 and 3, it has also a sum of 10. So this is what the teacher is talking about. If you're going to pair them like that, if you're going to pair the right numbers, um, you will have an easier time to get the final answer because this will become 10 plus 10 equals 20. Instead of like, for example, I'm going to pair the... I'm going to pair the 7 and the 6. You'll get 13, 
right? And then this one, if you're going to pair the 4 and the 3, you'll get 7. So it's the numbers are not like as exact as 10 and 10. It doesn't end with 0. So you have to think again on how to solve that. So in pairing numbers, try to look at the values of the numbers as well. Is there any numbers that if you pair them together, they will have an answer that ends with the digit 0 like this? If that is the case, then pair them so that you can add it easily. Just like this. 10 plus 10, that's very easy. 20. Okay? Very good. How about question number 10? Find the values of 18 minus 13, 15, 15. minus 10, 12 minus 15. 7. 15. Okay, very good for your answers. So in this one, notice that they're like paired already. This two, this two, and this two, right? We can easily subtract this because the first numbers are bigger compared to the other one, right? So it's still okay if you do like you combine all the negative numbers and you'll combine all the positive numbers and then subtract them. But it's easier this way since they're already paired correctly, right? The first number is bigger. The 18 is bigger 15. than 13. The 15 is bigger than 10. The 12 is bigger than 7. So it's easy for us to subtract that already, right? So 18 minus 13, how much is that? Five. Okay, this is five. How about, of course, copy the plus here. Very good. 15 minus 10, that is also five. And then 12 minus seven is also five. Okay, so after that, you just need to add all of these numbers that we got here. Five plus five plus five. Is equal to two. 15. Very good. So the final yes, answer is going to be 15. Very good, everyone. Okay, but you can also try to add all of the positive first. Yeah, and all of the negative and then try to look if it's still going to be 15. It's still going to be 15, but it's longer, you know, it's longer. So you have to go with the solution that would not use a lot of your time. How about question number two? 11. Find the value of 7 plus 5 plus 13 plus 15. What is your answer to this? 40! 40! 40! Very good. Remember what you said earlier? Yes. Okay, I acknowledge all of your answers. So remember what I said earlier that you have to pair the right numbers to get a sum that ends with at, uh, at most 0 as the units digit, right? Here, for example, if we're going to pair the 15 and 5, that will give us a sum of 20, right? So it ends with 0. And then if we're going to pair 13 and 7, it also ends with 0, their sum, because it's still going to be 20. So see, it's easier this way. 20. So 20 plus 20, it is equal to... 40, 40, 40. Very good. Okay, so it's 40, 40 there. So try to look carefully at the kind of numbers that you have in your problem. If you can pair them correctly, then you'll get the answer that you will got. Or you can also do a long addition. Let's say, if you don't want to do that, you can have here 30, 15, 13, 15. 5 and 7. This is also correct since you're just adding. Okay? Let's see if we're going to get 40. So add it in terms of their place values. 5 plus 3, that's 8. Plus 5, that is 13. Plus 7, that is 20. So bring down the 0. Carry the 2 here on the tens place. Then you have 2 plus 1 plus 1, that is 4. So see, it's still the same. The answer that you'll get is 40. So you can use any method that you are comfortable to do. Okay? How about question number 12? Find the value of... So it's very helpful, especially if the expression is very long like this. You have 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 1 plus 5 plus 7. What can you observe in the kind of numbers that we have here? It's actually just, it's actually just repeating, right? It's like two groups. 
the 1 plus 3 plus 5, it's just being repeated here. The same, 1 plus 3 plus 5. So it's like a copy. They just copied the first four numbers and put it again. So meaning, if this group right here, whatever the sum of this would also be the sum of this group, right? Because they're just the same numbers. So all you have to do is to find the sum of this first set of numbers and then just copy it for the second set. So 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7, that is equal to, you can pair this to 7 plus 3, that's 10. And then... 10, I mean, 5 plus 6, pair the 5 and 6, combine them, 5 and 1, so you'll have 6. So 10 plus 6, this is 16. So 16. meaning, if this part right here is 16, then, yes, then, listen carefully, then the other part is also, or the other group is also 16, right? If this is 16 here, here, it's also 16 on the, wait, I cannot annotate for a while. So it's just 16 for this group. This is 16. So if this is 16 here, meaning this is also 16, right? Because the numbers are just the same. 1, 3, 5, and 7. So after that, just combine this to 16. 16 plus 16 is also 30. 32. 32. Very good. 6 plus 6 is 12. And then you carry on the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1, that is 3. So that's why you got the 32. Very good. Okay, how about question number 13? For question number 13, Emily has an even number of oranges. Emily Hi. eats seven of them and exchanges three of them with Natasha for four cans of Coke. Determine whether the total number of Emily's oranges is odd or even now. So basically, our answer should be either even. odd or even. even. Okay, so let's solve even. for this. Emily has an even number of oranges. So you have to take note of that. We don't know the exact value. We just know that it's an even number, right? Even number of oranges. So even, let's put it as E. Emily eats seven of them. So when you are eating something, you are subtracting from the original number, right? Because it, it decreases. You got something, so meaning you subtract something. So that's why we are going to subtract. Like what me. kind of number is seven? Is it odd or even? Odd. Odd, very good. So that's why we're going to put here odd. 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 zero um, O or odd because the seven is an odd number. How about, and then exchanges three of them, of the oranges with Natasha. So again, after she ate the seven, she again got another three orange to exchange something from natasha so we're still gonna we're still gonna be subtracting what kind of number again is three it's also a it's also an odd, odd number odd. very good so our expression odd. would look like this from even you're going to subtract an odd number and you're going to subtract again another odd number and then finally what would be the Total number even. of Emily's even. orange now. Even. 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 Why? Okay. Remember that to determine if your answer is going to be even just by knowing if the numbers are even or odd, it's like this, right? It's the same with the addition and yeah. subtraction, okay? Even minus even is what? What do you think is the answer? Even minus even. 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 Example. Even. Even. Very good. Even. Okay, it's the same with addition. Even minus even, even. is even. even. Even minus odd. What would be odd. the answer? Odd. odd. Very good. Okay. Odd. Add minus odd. odd. Even. 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 Okay, it's even. even. Because odd plus odd is also even. even. How about odd minus even? You have a clue already, okay? So let's do that here. 
So, even minus odd, again, the answer is odd. Right? Oh. Even yes. minus even minus odd. So, the answer is this one. The second one that we wrote here. Even minus odd, the answer is odd. Take note. And then, odd minus minus this odd or odd minus odd is even. 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 So that's why your final answer is actually even. We solve like that, okay? So make sure that you memorize this again. Even, even minus even. What is the answer? Even. Okay. Even. Odd minus even. Even. Oh my god. Very good. Uh, odd oh, minus odd. Oh my god. Even. Okay. Even minus odd. It's odd. Oh, oh, oh. Even plus odd. Odd. Very oh, good. Okay. Odd. odd. E. Okay. Uh, subtraction even. and um, addition is just the same. Okay. Even plus even, it's going to be even. Even plus odd, that's going to be odd. Odd plus even, that's still going to be odd. And then odd plus odd, that's going to be even the same with the subtraction even. very good okay just familiarize that you'll really use that in your exam as well how about number 14 fill in the blanks with Five plus and minus plus to make the equation minus correct. eight plus two equal three okay how what? did you solve that Five uh, minus five plus four is nine. Did you, did you just write four minus ten plus two equals three? Huh? Oh, 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 oh,
And if that is the case, since we only have two signs, either plus or minus, so the rest would automatically have the plus sign. Wow. Okay, that is the case, okay? Because the answer here is it. So meaning this it would have the, the value, this number, we're going to find if this number exists here in our equation and if it exists then that number would have the minus sign and then the rest the other numbers would have the plus sign so let's see if that is correct if we put the minus here and then this is all plus let's see if this is five gonna be four. equal to three yes so five plus four that is nine, nine. minus, nine minus eight plus eight two plus one mm -hmm. plus two one plus three, plus three. Plus three. Plus okay two. For a while. So this one is, we can do the solution we're in, what do you call this one? You can add all of the positive numbers first and then the negative numbers as well, okay? Just to avoid the confusion. So you add all the positive, meaning the 5, the 4, and the 2. All of these are positive, right? So you have the 5 plus nine, five plus 4, that is 9, plus the 2, that is 11. And then you minus it with the negative, the only negative here, which is the 8. So if you combine this 5, 4, 2, because all of them are positive numbers, that is equal to, what do you call this? Uh, that is equal to 11. And then why do you think we have to add first? Because in MDAS, do you know what's in MDAS? If there are, in, in the equation, if there are two or more operations that exist, you have to follow the rule of MDAS, wherein you have to solve it according to which operation appears first, right? So which one is first among, I mean, between addition and subtraction? Addition comes first, right? M-D-A-S. So the addition comes first. That's why we first add these numbers. And then after that, we subtract. And we can also subtract because this one is a negative number. So 11 minus 3, 8 rather, that is 3. So that is how you got your final answer there, which is 3. And which means that the signs that we put there in the blank is correct. Okay, that's how you check your answer. How about question number uh, 15? A box of candies is sold for $6. How much are three boxes of candies sold for? 20? 18! 18! 18! 18! Why? 3 times 6 equals 18. Very good. Okay. Imagine that for one box, it is equal to or it's worth six dollars right this is now the worth or the price for one box of candy and this is the number of boxes of candy that you need to have so if you have that six times three is just actually 18 or you can just add also this so if you have three boxes of candies then that is going to be six plus six plus Six. So this is the first. This is your first. This is the first box. This is the second box. Okay. And then the price is the six dollars. Okay. And then this is your third box. So you can just add that six plus six plus six equals eighteen as well. So whichever method you're going to use, you still have to get the same answer. Okay. Very good. How about if we have this question number? 16. Okay. Jack has 18 biscuits and Tommy has 4 biscuits. How many biscuits did Jack give Tommy so that they will have the same number of biscuits? What is your answer? Seven. Okay, seven. Okay. So to determine, since you're asked here that the two of them should have the same number of biscuits, we cannot do that. Yes, we cannot do that if we don't know how many are the total number of biscuits all in all. So to do that, we're going to add the number of biscuits for Jack as well as for Tommy. Yes. So we're going to combine this. 18 plus 4, which is equal to? 
twenty. Twenty two. Okay, because eight plus 22. four is twelve. So we have a carry one here. It's twenty two. So we need the total two. number Flash of two. um. Biscuits are 22, and then we're going to divide that into two. two. Because, because, why? We have two persons. Very good. We have two person that's dividing the biscuits. We have Jack and Tommy. So that's why we're going to divide it into two. And then this will become... 11. 11. Very good. Miss. Okay, so this is... Yes, do you have any question? This is now... Can I go get water? Uh, sure, go ahead. We have okay, two. so now it I means that Jack and Tommy should have 11 biscuits 11. each, right? Each. Mm -hmm. Okay, for Jack and for Tommy. So since yeah. Jack has more than 11, so we're going, he is definitely going to give know. out, yes, he's going to give the uh, excess biscuits that he doesn't need because he only needs 11 so that both of them will have equal number and remember that tommy at first just have four so tommy needs more to have 11 so 18 minus 11 because we're going to just make sure seven. that jack has 11 so it's equal to seven, seven. And this seven will go ahead or go to Tommy, and let's see if that would equal to seven. I mean, eleven as well. So four plus this seven that that is coming 11. from Jack. That is equal to eleven. Very good. Yes. So now both of them have eleven biscuits. So the answer is Jack needs to give seven. 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 Very good. Okay. How about question number 17? Uh, let's have this. According to the pattern shown below, what is the number in the space divided? 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. Or it means that all the numbers here are factors of factors of four. Very good. Okay, that's correct. Yeah, enough. You don't have to shout your answers now. It's okay. So it means that all the numbers here are factors of four. As you can see, this is just four, eight, twelve, sixteen. If you go to your like the factor factors like the multiplication table, this all exists in the table number four. Because this is these are factors of four, or basically you're also correct that the pattern is just you need to add four to the previous number to get the next number, right? Because that's their common difference. This is four right here, or plus four. It's it's addition or it's plus because it's increasing. Okay, that means we are adding. So eight and twelve also the difference with these two numbers is still four. The same with 16 and 12, that is still plus 4. So if that is the case, then all you need to do is to add again 4 to the previous number. Our previous number here is 16 to get the next number. So 16 plus 4, that is 20. That's how you got your answer, which is 20. Very good. Did you guys all got perfect score in your mock test? Okay, how about 18? How many number or numbers 16. is or are there between 15 to 13, 16. including the 16. first and the last number? 16? Okay, so the first thing that you have, this one is a bit tricky and you can be tricked about this because usually what you do is you're just gonna subtract 30 and 15, right? Because you have to get the difference. How many numbers are there between 30 and 15. Okay, now if you're going to do that, the answer is going to be 15, right? Because this will become 10, this will become 2. So 2 minus 1, that's 1. 10 minus 5 is 5. So some would answer 15. Teacher is 15. Remember that subtraction is different when you are counting the numbers, right? We have to count here because it says that 
how many numbers? We have to count those numbers between 30 and 15 or 15 and 30. And you have to include the first and the last. So meaning all the numbers starting from 15 up until 30, it's counted also. So that is why instead of 15, we need to add what? One. Okay. It is 15. It's 30 minus 15 plus 1 or 15 plus 1. What is this one? This one represents like the first number because again, subtraction is different when you are counting. I'm going to give you a basic example. For example, if I say uh, how many numbers are there between 10 and 1? And then I'll say that, okay? How many numbers are there between 1 and 10 including the first and the last number? So if we're going to subtract this, 10 minus 1, that is equal to 9, nine. right? Yes. But if we are counting, including number 1 and number 10, let's try to count. 1, 2, one, 3, three four, two, 5, five six, six, 7, seven eight, 8, 9, 10. 10. How many numbers did we got? We got? 10. Ten. So see, that's the difference. When you're counting, it's 10 because you included the first and the last number. When you're just subtracting, it's 9. So meaning it's less than 1. So all you have to do to not be tricked about that is to, of course, do the subtraction because it would be easier. And then just do not forget to add 1 if the instruction is you include the first and the last number. Okay? So you need to add that. One. So, for example, if this is um, 10 to 34 right Three. here, what would be your answer? Let's see? 24. 25. 25. Very good. Okay, it's 25. Five. Again? Last one. Yes, very good. You're going to subtract. Find the difference between these two numbers. So 34 minus 10, that is 24. Do not forget about the plus 1 because again, subtraction is different from the counting. You need to always plus the 1. So plus 1 is equal to 25. Therefore, your final answer should be 25. Okay, just remember that. Especially if it says including the first and the last numbers. You really have to do it, okay? Very good. How about question number 19? So this time we are in the geometry part. According to the pattern shown below, what number or what should be the figure drawn in the blank? What is our pattern? Pattern. Mm. Circle star. Okay. So basically, it's just like Circle. this. This four. Okay. You start from this figure, and then you have the star. I mean, the triangle and then you have the circle and then you have the star and then it went back to this right so basically you just have to repeat this sequence this four figures right here after the star you go back again to this first here followed by the triangle so what is the next figure after the triangle that is circle right so that is why you have to put circle right here and it's Correct, because after this, you're going to go back again to this figure, then triangle, then circle, and um, star. So it means that your pattern is uniform or it's correct because it's all the same, okay? That's how you can make sure that it's correct. So that is why it should be circle here, to so make them uniform or the same. Okay, how about question number 20? At least stop annotating on the screen, please. You cannot annotate. Okay, thank you. At least how many cubes are there in the figure below? Okay, very good. Here, you can actually see all of the cubes, right? But of course, not all of its sides, but there are some sides that are visible in the figure. So you can start counting from the bottom part, the bottom layer, okay? So let's start from that. How many cubes do we have here? We have one, we have two, we have this one, four, and then you have five. So 
for the first layer, you have five. And then for the second layer, you have... How many? Six. Second One, layer. Six. One. One. Very good. You only have one here on the second layer. Okay, so if you're going to combine this to get the total, it's just six. Okay, so therefore, the correct answer for question number 20 is six. Okay, since we are in the 20th question, I'm gonna give you guys a short break time. Do you want that? So that you can rest for a bit and then we're gonna be back after yeah. a few minutes. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna give you thank your 10-minute you, break time. Ten yes, minutes. thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Okay, so whatever the time that it's in your country right now, since we don't have the same time, I guess, just add 10 minutes and then after 10 minutes, we're going to be back and resume our class. Okay, so go ahead. You can mute your microphones and off your camera for a bit.
They need a weed as all. They need the weed as all. They need a weed as all. Ding, ding, ding. Daddy, did he shall eat cake? Push belly down. Yes, I'm a hang. Loading, loading. All right. Hello once again, everyone. We're going to our break time is already done. So we're going to resume our class already. So please um go back to your seats in front of your screens or your monitor so that you can focus again on our discussion. You can also turn on your cameras right now. But please mute your microphones, okay? Just turn on your cameras. All right, we are done with question number 20 earlier. So now we're going to answer the next one, which is question number 21. So we're still in the ge ge geometry part. What is or how many square squares are there in the figure below? Nine. 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 Okay. Nine. 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 Yes, it's nine. The first thing that you have to do is to count all the small squares first. So you have one, two, three, two, three, four, four five, five, six, six seven, eight. 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 Yes, eight. So eight. aside from that, since the question only asks you to a big one. get yes, the square. Yeah. So the big one. How many small squares? It says square. So every 
kind of square, whatever the size of that, you have to count as well. So that's why you have to also look how about if there are bigger squares here. So we have one, right? This what? part right here. There's only one. Is a square or a two by two. Yeah. So that is equal to one square, which is eight plus one plus nine. Very good. Therefore, your final answer should be nine. Okay. Nine. Correct. How about question number 22? 22. Okay, there you go. How many parallelograms are, are there in the book of the Four. 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 But first, what is a parallelogram? Do you know what is that? Four sides. Very good. Okay, it is a polygon or the shape that has four sides. Four sides. Okay, very good. You have to know that first before you can answer this, right? So it, it, it means or it means that we have to find those figures that has four sides here. So what are those? Okay, it is or actually a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. Parallel is like this. Like this, this side and this side, they are parallel. Okay, that's one parallel, meaning they're not going to meet each other. So the other parallel to this is this side and this side. So that is what you mean by parallelogram. It's two parallels there. This first parallel here and then the second is this one. Okay, sides that are not gonna meet each other. Now, speaking of that, since we already know what is a parallelogram, can you please locate where are the parallelograms in the screen? Diamond. 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 Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Six. What else? What else? This is a parallel. Very good. Diamond again. Mm -hmm. What yeah. else? Diamond again. Which, which one? Okay. Is this a this is this parallel as well? No. No. Okay. What else? Is there any other answer? No. 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 How many is the total then? Four. 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 Okay, how about this big one that teacher exampled earlier? It's it is also a parallel, right? Yes. Okay. What else? Yes. How about this one? How about is this a parallel? Yes. A parallel. No. 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 Four sides. Oh. Is it? Yes. Four sides. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. four sides. It's a four sides, but are are there two parallel sides to that? Oh, no. How do you do parallel again? Oh. This is your parallel side if you're going to say this. Okay. It means that whatever is going to happen, they're not going to meet each other, the sides. The si and then, here also, this side, is, is it parallel to this? Is that a parallel? Oh. It's not right. Parallel is just no. it's the same. How no. many yeah. like a diamond? Mm. Okay. So how many is the correct answer then? One, two, three, oh. four. One, two, three, four. Oh. Meaning it should be the same. There, the sides, the orientation of the sides should be the same. And then they're just gonna when you when you say parallel, oh. they're not gonna meet each other. Just like that. All throughout. So, for example, when you say non-parallel, let's say this side. Okay, I'm gonna give you an example. That's why the triangle cannot be a parallelogram. This side and then this side, they're meeting each other, right? They're gonna meet this side and then this side as well. This is their meeting point right here. So that is why it, that is one example of uh, sides that are not parallel. 
because they're eventually gonna meet. Okay. So the triangle actually has a side that is a parallel, one side only, but a parallelogram should have two sides that are parallel. Okay. Very good. The answer is actually four. Okay, how about question number 23 then? What is going to be your answer to this question? How many sides Major, are there four. in the polygon below? Four, 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 four. 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 How many line segments are there uh, in the polygon below? What else are you answering? Okay, I'm gonna ask you if you have a segment and then you have two points right there, how many line segments can you make out of that? One. One. Very good. This is just one. Okay. How about if your line, not line, how about if your segment has three points? How many line segments can you make out of that? How many? If you have three points in the segment, how many line segments now? Can you make? Two, three, four. What is your answer? No, not the final one. If you have three points or dots in your segment, how many line segments can you make out from that? I said that if there are two points, it's equal to one line segment. That is correct because this is just one line segment. A, li oh, a line segment is a segment that is formed by from one point to another point, right? So that's why this is one. So if you have three points in the segment, how many do you think would be the line segments? Three. Okay, that is actually correct. Three, three line three. segments. Okay, where are those three? Coach, where can we find those three line segments? Okay, the first one is, again, remember, a line segment is one from one point to another point. So this one, this is your first line segment. The second line segment is the next to that. Okay, if you start from this point and then all the way here, that's another line segment, right? So we got two. The third one is the entire segment because that's still going to be from one point to another point. So if you're going to trace that, that's another line segment. So we have a total of three. three. That's how you got the three. Okay, so this three. is very really useful because if you're going to look at the polygon, just try to look at the lines for the longer segment. And then, if you see a line, for example, this line, everyone, you see a line that has three points, you know already that it is equal to the real line segment. So you just label that with three. Okay? And then the long one and the short one. What else? Do we have another line that has three points? There are some other lines. Yes, we do have. Okay, this one line right two, here. It also has three points. So meaning three. this is also equal to three lines. Three. Three. Yes, in the bottom, this part also has three, three. points three. and another three. And then this one is one. Yes, it's one because it's just two points. So now we're going to find the total of this by adding all the lines that we found. Yes. So we have three plus three plus three plus one. Okay, we add all of that. So we have three plus three plus one, which is equal to ten. So your final answer is going to be nine. Okay, it's not nine, it is ten. Very good. Okay, it's easier for you to do that than, you know, counting it one by one, like all the line segments. It will take a lot of your time and maybe you will also be confused. So it's very important that you remember again, if there are three points in a line, it is equal to three line segments Wait. as well. There are two points or two dots in that certain line, it's equal to 
one nice very good okay how about in question number 25 what is your answer for this we are in the last uh subtopic or subcategory which is the combinatorics so this one is like one of the hardest topics so you have to pay attention okay. uh, two, among the values two, of the following expressions how many odd numbers are there two. okay let's have a short review what what uh, kind of number is an odd number how can you say that the number is an odd number again Divisible, not divisible by two. Very good. So it's not gonna be divisible by two. That is your odd number. Okay. It's always going to have a remainder if we're going to divide it with two. So okay, that's very good. Now we are asked here to find how many odd numbers are here. So before we can do that, we still have to find the values of the expressions here. So our expressions is three plus one, five plus uh one and then four plus three and then six plus four okay so let's try to find the values of that three plus two that is five, five. five. one that is six six, uh, six. Seven. Five. Seven. Seven. Ten. okay this is ten, so ten. This is our numbers after we evaluate the expression. So now, the next thing that you have to look is the odd numbers. How many odd numbers do we have here? You have? Five, two, two. 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 the odd numbers? Five and seven. Very good. Okay. You have five, five seven. and seven. And you have seven. So you have one, two. You have two odd numbers, the five and the seven. The rest are also even numbers. Okay, very good. That is correct. So the important thing in this question is you have to make sure that your answer in the expressions is correct, okay? That you add this correctly. The three plus two, the five plus one, the four plus three, and then the six plus four. You have to make sure that you're not gonna miscount your answer so that you will get the Right, final answer. Okay, how about question number 26? Divide 10 triangles into five equal groups. How many triangles is there, are there in each group? Two. Okay, how many, how many triangles do we have? You have 10. Okay, said that you have to divide it into five equal groups. So meaning you have five groups. So you can automatically divide this five, okay? Because you said divide 10 triangles into five equal groups. We'll get how many triangles are going to be for each in the group. So 10 divided by 5 is? Two, 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 two. What number are we going to multiply to 5 to get 2? It's actually, I mean, to get 10 is actually uh, 2. Okay, because 2 times 5, that is also 10. Yeah. It's equal to 0. Or I'm going to teach you another way to answer this without dividing. Remember that we have 10 triangles, right? And then it says that you have to divide it into 5 equal groups. So meaning we have to make 5 groups that has equal number of triangles here. So if we're going to, for example, if I'm going to divide this by three, like, okay, I'll assume the group has three. So it's not possible, right? Because there are three groups that has three, but we have a remaining of one here. So it's not correct. Okay, another try that you can do. Uh, four. If you group them by four, you have two groups, but you have, it mean, um, remember that you need to have five equal groups how many equal groups do we have here just two just two right one group uh, second group so it's not meaning it's not correct okay what else how about we say five okay if we're going to divide this i mean this by five you will have two groups also even though they're equal but you'll only have two groups so it's not correct because again we have to make five groups and the five groups actually is the by two so each group should have two because if it's like that then try to look here at the screen if we're going to divide this by two so how many groups do we have now this is our first group 
This is our second group. This is our third group. This is our fourth group. And this is our fifth group. So, meaning we have five groups that has equal number of triangles because all of the groups has two triangles. So, that's what meets or satisfy the statement in this question. So, that is why the answer is two. You should have two triangles in each of the group in order to have five equal groups among the 10 triangles that you have. Okay, very good. How about question number 27? Find the largest number of the following sequence. 85, 58, 8, What is the largest number? Because it's a biggest number because he knows he wants a biggest number. So I only see 85 as a biggest number. Okay, very good. To determine the value of the number, the bigger the digit, the larger also the entire number, right? So among all the numbers that we have here, 85. Uh, yes, only 85 starts with 85. And of course, uh, you have here the 5, you have here the 5, and the other numbers are just one digit. So basically, it's very small. So between these three two-digit numbers, this digit is the only one that starts with 8. And 8 is a very big number compared to 5. So that is why this is our largest number, 85. Okay, very good. How about question number 20? Okay, I'm just going to rewind. How about if I say... Which number is the second largest among our number of sequence? Very good. 58. 58. 58. 58. Because it's the second to the 85, right? How about if my question is, which number is the second smallest? Eight. Very eight. good. Eight. Eight. Because if we're, not, if we're going to arrange this. 85. Mm -hmm. 85, you will have 58, you will have 52, and then you have 8, and then you have 5. So if we're talking about the second smallest, your first smallest is of course the 5. The second small, smallest is the 8. Okay, how about if my, if my, if my question is find the fourth smallest number? Four smallest, fifth smallest number. Fourth. Okay, you just have to continue that. Yes, this is your first smaller, second smaller. This is your third smaller number, and then this is the fourth smaller number. Very good. Okay. Correct. Very well, everyone. Okay, how about question number 28? Paula has four $5 coins. At most, how many $10 money note or notes can she exchange this coins for? Two. 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 How are we going to solve this one? Five times. Okay, very good. It is 20. Yes, I'm annotating everyone. Okay, correct. It's 20 because since you have five, I mean, since you have four coins, imagine this is your coin. Okay, and then each coin has the value of $5. If you're going to add this, it is equal to 20, right? If you're going to yes. add that. Okay, 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, that's 20. Or just 4 times 5 because you have 4 coins that has a value of 5. That's why you did the 5 times four or four times five okay now you know that your total amount of money is 20 then you need to change that into ten dollar money note or notes so how many possible ten dollar money notes can you exchange that's why you're going to divide the 20 divide. into Three. what yeah. oh. divide to what and very good so because we have to find out or we want to find out how many 10 
dollar money okay. note can we exchange out from 20? Or basically, how many tens are there in 20? It's like two. grouping. Two. 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 So, 20 divided by 10, that is 2. And then 2 times 10, that is 20. So, this is 0. So, meaning your answer is correct. So, therefore, you will have or you can possibly have two $10 money notes if your money is worth $20. How about if I say at most how many... Um, let's say five. How many five dollar mm -hmm. money notes can she exchange? Four. 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 Very good. You just have to divide the 20 again with five. How about five. if I say how many mm, six? How about that? Three. Three. Why three? three. Twenty divided by six is three point three 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 three. Okay, because if you're going to divide the six with twenty, that is not possible. I mean, you cannot get an exact answer, but because you'll have a remainder, right? But your here, how many possible six dollars can you make from twenty? So it's it's doable. We can do that. So six, 20 divided by 6, there's no certain exact number, but there's a number near to that. So we just have to use that. Yeah. What is the nearest number to 20 that is a factor of 6 or can be divided by 6? You have 18, actually, which is? 18. Yes, which is, if you multiply that to 6, it's going to be, you should have the 3. Because 6 times 3 is? 18. Now, you have a remainder of 2. Of course, the 2 is not going to be um, important anymore because it's uh, it needs more um, dollars or coins to get 6. So just leave it there. You have that um, remainder of 2. So basically, if you have $20 and then you have to exchange that into $6 coins, you will have 3. Okay, last one. How about if I say you have um, $9. How many possible $9 can you make? Nine, two. Oh, two. Very two. good. Okay, it's two. 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 Because it's going to be equal to 18. Okay, and then you only have 20. Very good. How about question number 29? <laughs> Okay, among the following numbers, how many one-digit numbers is there? Three! 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 Okay, what are those numbers? Three! Okay, very good. One-digit numbers are just nine, seven, and eight. Okay, you have three. Very good. How about if I say how many are two-digit numbers? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 are you sure? Two. Okay, correct. Two. That is just two, which is the 42 and the 20. Okay, very good. Why do you why do you know that these two numbers are even? Aside from you can divide them into two. By three. By two. Yeah, aside from that. Aside from Wrong. that. How can you make sure that this is an Wrong. even number? Because it ends with a even set number. The unit's digit is also even. Okay. 
Exactly. Yes, oh, very good. Um, to make sure that your uh, di- numbers that has many digits, to make sure if it's an odd or an even, just look at the last digit in the right or the oh, digit, monkey digit monkey. in the ones place. If it's an even, meaning the entire number is even. What does that odd, mean? Meaning the entire number is also an odd. For example, how about I'm going to give you a number one, three, five, six, seven. And I'm going to ask you, what kind of number is this? Is this an even number or an odd number? What would be your answer? This is seven. Is this even or this is, is this odd? Odd. Because, odd. because why? Did you hear what I said earlier? Why is it odd? Yeah, it's correct. But why? Listen carefully because the last digit here, look at this. What kind of number is seven? Is it odd or even? Odd. odd. So therefore, this entire number also is an odd number. That's how you determine if it's an odd or a number, if the number has more than one digit, okay? That's what I asked you earlier, okay? That is why the 42 and 20 are even numbers because aside from they are uh, going to be divided, you can divide them by two. Look at the unit's digit or the last digit in the right. It is all even as well. Even. even. So that is why that number is the same with the add. So if the unit's digit is also add, the entire number is also going to be add. So that is why 53 is odd, 75 is odd, 97 is odd. Because their last digit is also odd, okay? I hope you remember that because those questions will, like, come out on your exam as well. So you have to ask how many numbers. Of course, you are very welcome. Okay, how about our last question for today? Arranging the following numbers in ascending order. Okay, ascending order. From the smallest to the largest. Find the value of this one is what I example earlier. Find the value of the third smallest number. Very good. So let's arrange first the numbers, everyone, according to the question. It says that we have to arrange the numbers in ascending. So we'll start from the very Small number oh, up to the largest oh, one. So what is the smallest number here, everyone? 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. Very good. Next. 33. 33. 33. Okay. What is the next number? 40. 40. 40. 40. Okay, we're done arranging them from ascending order. Now, which number is the first smallest number? First. First. Ah, you're not listening because you just keep on talking. No, no, listen first. My question is, which number is the first Smallest number. 25. 25. 25 is our first. 25. How about the fourth smallest number? 78. Very good. Okay. Here in the question number 30, it asks you to get the third smallest. Okay. So basically, it's not the smallest of all the smallest number it's just the third so we're going to rank this this is your first smallest one of course this is the second smallest because it's next to the first smallest and then continue this is your third smallest okay how about if the question is find the value of the third largest number what would be your answer 40 40 40 
40. Very good. Because we'll start counting from the right. We'll start counting from the largest number. This is your first largest number. This is your second largest number. And this is your third largest number. Very good. Okay. You already know that. Two the smallest. Yes. And the smaller two largest. Very it's still good. 14. Okay. So finally, we're done with our 30 set questions. And this is your math exam. Very good. Okay. And I also want to thank all and I leave now. international students. Yes. But before that, stay for a bit. Uh, Okay. Well, all the international yeah. students here yeah. also yeah. for attending today's yeah. class. I hope you learned something. Before we leave the class, this is a very special class, everyone, because for the Filipino students out there, you have like foreign classmates here. So I know that it's like your first time seeing each other. So let's try to have like... Um, um, what do you call it? A remembrance for this. So let's take a picture. Please open your cameras, everyone, to those who can open their camera. Okay. How about the others? James. Fran. Anne, um, can you please open your camera? Si Simon. I'm, I'm like announcing it correct. Okay. In the count of one, two, three, please smile on the camera. Okay. Wait, I'm going to have the second group as well. Okay. In the count of one, two, three, please smile on the camera, everyone. Yes. Okay. Last. One, two, three. Take a pose. Okay. Another. One, two, three. Give your best pose. Okay. Very good. So thank you so much, everyone. I'm wishing all of you good luck for your competition. I think it's going to happen next week. So do your best and apply all the things that you have learned in our class, okay? I guarantee you that most of the questions are going to be the same with all of the things that we discussed here. So just always review it. This session is also recorded. So if ever you want to review this again, if you want to watch this again, uh, a link will be sent to your email. So you can just click on there and then you can watch this again, okay? If you want to review again. So that's it. You can leave the meeting now. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Goodbye, teacher Bill. Goodbye. Have a great day, everyone. You can leave the room and you can leave the meeting now. Go ahead. Okay. Bye, teacher. Bye-bye, teacher. Goodbye, Joanna. Goodbye, Lee Tok Min Kian. Okay. Tran Pukang. Goodbye, everyone.